March 21st. And we're talking about, there we go, and we're talking about uh, the time period between uh, uh, about now and uh, April 8th, 9th, and 10th, 1904. Uh, if you've been following along, you know that, that even the days of the week uh, are lining up. And uh, we're sort of discussing the, the circumstances surrounding the new, the dawn of the new age, if you will. So, what was Crowley doing on the 21st? Well, it says in his book, in his auto hagiography, March 21st, 22nd, 23rd, that's about as close as we're going to get here, there seems to have been a reaction after the success of the 20th. Now, if you'll recall, on the 19th, on, on uh, uh, Crowley did the, the ritual of the invocation of Horus. He did it at, at noon and uh, without much success. And then at Rose's instruction, he did it again at midnight and uh, said with great success. And he was very enthusiastic. Uh, we don't know exactly what is what happened, but his diary reads like, oh, wow. Oh, far out. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. He really went apeshit happy with with uh, the invocation. Today is something different. On March 21st, he says, there seems to have been a reaction after the success of the 20th. The phenomena faded out. I tried to clear up my position by the old methods and did a long tarot divination, which proved perfectly futile. Now, I don't know why, but I'm encouraged when I hear about long tarot divinations that prove futile, because I have a long history and experience with that myself. So even Crowley had this, uh, this paradox of great success followed by uh, a, a dry period. And uh, you can imagine, but he did do stuff starting today. And let's take a peek at uh, the Equinox of the Gods. Uh, where he says, uh, uh, here's the invocation, confession. Excuse me, talk amongst yourselves for a moment. He says, okay, hang on. I had it just a moment ago. During the period, uh, March 23rd through April 8th, whatever else may have happened, it is at least certain that the work continued to some extent, that the inscription of the stele were translated, or Frater P, and that he paraphrased the latter in verse. We find him using, or prepared to use, the same text in Liber Legis, or the Book of the Law. Uh, perhaps then, perhaps later, he made the name uh, coincidence of the Kabbalah to which uh, we talk about here. So, what he was doing during this 
this dry period was getting the stele translated. Let's see if I can do this without tipping things over. Getting Well, actually, he had uh, a reproduction of the stele uh, made uh, by the people at the museum. I guess you could pay somebody to do that. Then he had it had it translated. Okay. Then he paraphrased the translation and put it into verse. And uh, here is, let's see, in the equinox of the gods. What's that, darling? So it's nothing to fight over. So it's nothing to fight over, she says, and she's absolutely right. Okay, the topmost register. That's the topmost register right there. It says, under the winged disc, Behutet. Okay. And then Crowley puts in parentheses, Hadit. Behutet. Now, people who, who are Egypt will say, hey, there's no Hadith in uh, Egyptian iconography or Egyptian mythology. Uh, Crowley is indicating here that, that it is at least his pronunciation of Behutet or B-E-H-D-E-T as he has here. So the topmost register right under the winged disc says, Behutet, or Hadit, the great God, the Lord of Heaven. In the middle register, the two vertical lines to the left, okay, referring to, see, here, here is the, under the wings, what we just said. I'm trying to I'm trying to do this like in a backwards mirror here, the top register, okay, Behutet, <laughs> the great God, the Lord of Hosts, okay, the five vertical lines to the right, okay, Osiris, priest of Lantu, Lord of Thebes. Opener of the doors of Newt at Karnak, Akaf Nakansu the Justified. Okay. Now, they're talking about this guy right here. Okay. The deceased. These are his credentials. Okay. They're identifying him by name, not to be confused with any other person buried buried here okay that was his job okay he was uh, let's see he was the priest of mentu lord of thebes his gig his official gig in the in the court was opener of the doors of newt at karnak he had a he had an official position, like uh, uh, he, he might not have actually opened the doors every day uh, at the Temple of Karnak, but he was the official opener of the door at Karnak, and probably on great occasions they trotted him in to do that. Below the altar, okay, here's the altar. Right there, there's the altar, and below the altar it says, there's these hieroglyphs, right there. Below the altar are oxen, can you see the oxen, geese, wine, and bread. Behind the god, behind the seated God there. You see that bird? That's showing you that it's Horus in case you uh, needed to be reminded. 
Behind the god is the hieroglyph of Amnenti. And the lowest register down there, this is what it says. Saith Osiris, the priest of Montu, spelled Montu here, Lord of Thebes, the opener of the doors of Nut at Karnak, Ankaf Mekansu, the justified. Hail, thou whose praise is high, thou great willed, O soul, bah, very awful, mighty of awe, that giveth the terror of him among the gods, shining in glory upon his great throne, making ways for the soul, bah, for the spirit, yeke, and for the shadow, kabd, and here it's spelled K-H-A-B-T. I am prepared. I shine forth as one that is prepared. I have made way to the place in which are Ra, Tom, Kephra, and, uh, and Hathor. Osiris, the priest of Mentu, Lord of Thebes, Ankafnakansu, the justified son of, and it just says all caps, M N. T. S N M T. So it says here that's the father's name. The method of spelling shows that he was a foreigner. There is no clue as to the vocalization. M N B S N M T. Born of the cistern bearer of Amun, the lady Atna Sher. Okay, that's what it says. And that is sort of the, the rough draft of, at the time, a pretty young science of uh, Egyptology and the translation of hieroglyphs. Uh, I understand that Crowley's first translation that he got was from the hieroglyphs into French, which the, uh, the people at the museum were, were more comfortable in, uh, in translating them. And Crowley took the, took the French, translated it, and then paraphrased it. Now, on the reverse side, There's all of this stuff. And like I said before, this is the sort of the stock, the boilerplate section of the Egyptian Book of the Dead that is placed at the foot of the scarab that is wrapped up and placed inside the mummy's chest as a replacement for its heart. So this is the magical talisman of uh, of the of the heart that is given to the mummy. So in other words, if this was a giant scarab on top here, a big bug like this, this would be on its foot. You get it? Okay. Only it wouldn't be this big unless you had a big freaking chest. Okay. Here's what it says. And there's 11 lines of writing. So there's 11 sections here. Also, it was very rare for funeral steles. This, uh, the original was wood and it was stuccoed. And then the stucco was painted. It's uh, sort of like uh, what they do with uh, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. But it was still very weird and very odd and very rare to have the back of a funeral stele printed with anything. So it was a little unusual. And it was one of the reasons that, that this stele 
uh, among thousands of other steles that they could have put up. It was one of the reasons why it was chosen for exhibit at the at the museum. Certainly at the time, the, the museum didn't say, oh, this is a big thalemic thing here. No, they could, there wasn't a thalemic thing started yet. Uh, they had it up because, first of all, there was every indication that it was painted personally by Ankaf Nakansu, who was a kind of a well-known uh, uh, political figure of the day, or a, a royal figure uh, of the day. He was like the Henry Kissinger to a couple of administrations. So that's why it was up, and the fact that it was unusually painted on the back. Eleven lines of writing, and we'll just start, follow along. Saith Osiris, the priest of Muntu, Lord of Thebes, Ankaf Nakansu, the justified, my heart from my mother, my heart of my existence, upon earth stand not forth against me as witness, drive me not back amongst the sovereign judges, and uh, there's lots of parenthetical stuff here, but I'm just going to read the, the quotes. Among the sovereign judges, neither incline against me in the presence of the great God, Lord of the West. Now, and here's number five. Now uh, I am united with earth in the great West and endure no longer on earth. I'm dead now. Number six or line six. Saith Osiris, he who is in Thebes, Ankaf Nakansu, the justified, O only, and then on line seven, continuing, only one shining like the moon. Osiris, Ankaf Nakansu, has come forth, uh, it, we go into line eight, come forth among uh, uh, these multitudes, nine. He hath gathered together those who are in the light. The underworld, Duat, is also, and then it moves to line 10, open to him. Lo, Osiris Ankaf Nakansu. Okay, he's, he's joined with God now. And they call him Osiris Ankaf Nakansu. Cometh forth by day to do all that he wishes upon the earth among the living. Okay. Now, perhaps you'll recognize a lot of that as it was paraphrased uh, eventually in the, in the Book of the Law itself. And uh, if I can see if we have that here. Here's how Crowley versified that. Above the gemmed azure, the naked splendor of Nuit, she bends in ecstasy to kiss the secret ardors of Hadit. The winged globe, the starry blue, are mine, O Ankaf Nakansu. I am the Lord of Thebes, and I, the inspired fourth speaker of Mentu, for me unveils the veiled sky, the self-slain Ankaf Nakansu, whose words are truth. I invoke, I greet thy presence, O Rahur Kuit. Unity, uttermost showed, I adore the might of thy breath, supreme and terrible God, who makest the gods and death to tremble before thee. I, I adore thee. Appear on the throne of Ra, open the ways of the Ku, Light in the ways of the Ka. The ways of the Cobbs runs through to stir me or still me. Aum, let it kill me. The light is mine, its rays consume me. I have made a secret door into the house of Ra and Tum, of Kephra and Ahathur. I am thy Theban, no men too, the prophet Ankaf Nakansu. By Besna Maut, my breast I beat. By wise Tanik, I weave my spell. 
Show thy star splendor, O Nuit. Bid me within thine house to dwell. O winged snake of light, Hadit, abide with me, Rahur Kuit. Now that's the, the front of the stele. Now we have to remember, and it's important to remember, that Crowley wrote, he had the stele translated, uh, he put it into English, and then he paraphrased it into verse. And what I just read to you was already down on paper before the Book of the Law was written on April 8th, or it was dictated on 8th, April 8th, 9th, or 10th. These verses that are so familiar to, to many of us as coming from the Book of the Law, and remember the Book of the Law was, was dictated by uh, I was on um, three consecutive days, April, April 8th, 9th, and 10th, or whenever it was dictated. The voice of the dictation as it was being dictated to Crowley did not insert these verses. They were inserted later, days later, with roses help and instruction and, and suggestions of where those verses should be placed within the dictation uh, of, the, of the Book of the Law. So the, please remember that these verses that I'm reading to you right now were already on paper before the Book of the Law was dictated. And they were later inserted within the text of the Book of the Law according to subsequent instructions uh, that, uh, that Rose uh, suggested to Crowley. He was following her, her instructions pretty uh, strictly. So, okay, here's the back. And this is the, this is the part of the uh, of the stele. Sayeth men to the truth-telling brother, who is the master of Thebes from his birth, O heart of me, O heart of my mother, O heart which I had upon the earth, stand not thou against me a witness. Oppose me not, judge me in my quest, accuse me not of unfitness before the great God, the dread Lord of the West. This is that stele, or that uh, heart scarab verse from the Book of the Dead. For I fastened the one to the other with a spell for their mystical girth. The earth and the wonderful west when I flourished on earth on thy breast. The dead man, Ankafna Kansu, saith with his voice of truth and calm, O thou that hast the single arm, Thou that glitterest in the moon, I weave thee in the spinning charm, I lure thee with the billowy tune. The dead man, Ankafna Kansu, hath parted from the darkling crowds, hath joined the dwellers of the light, opening duant the starry abodes, their keys receiving. The dead man, Ankafna Kansu, hath made his passage into night, his pleasure on earth to do, among the living. Now, uh, many of you will recognize an echo of that also in, uh, in Crowley's uh, Mass of the Phoenix, that, uh, that ritual that's done at sunset. Uh, with mirth I now go forth and with thanksgiving to do my pleasure on the earth among the legions of the living. That's how it ends. But anyway, that's what Crowley was doing. That's what he was obsessed with. That's what he was focused on. And with Rose's help, okay, they were actually, they were a team doing this together uh, for the next three or four days here and leading up to when she would again fall into a trance and give details of... Uh, 
how they should go about receiving the dictated book of the law uh, on April 8th, 9th, and 10th. We will continue to discuss. But anyway, I hope you're getting a, uh, a kick out of this. And I know that, that uh, there are many of you out there that are far more uh, uh, familiar with uh, minutia and the, the details of this event. And I'm positive there are many more of you out there who know much more and are much more uh, familiar with uh, uh, Egyptology and things like that. So forgive my clumsy uh, informal review of this material. Anyway, it's the best I can do. Until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. Oh, and happy Persian New Year.